Now let's do some practice where you're going to take a look at drawing the Lewis structure and determining the polarity of the molecule. I'll do the first one for you. And um, you can do the rest and come back and we'll check your answers. So NH4 plus, hey wait, that's an ion. What is it doing as a Lewis structure? Well, polyatomic ions have covalent bonds. So polyatomic ions are covalently bonded atoms that have uneven charges. So polyatomic ions, their atoms are covalently bonded. And all that means is that they share their electrons. And the reason why they're ions is because they're there's an unequal charge. So let's say there's a difference in the total number of protons versus electrons. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at NH4. Well, our rule was we are going to arrange the atoms in space, and we put the least electronegative or the atom that can make more bonds in the middle. Well, if we look at nitrogen and hydrogen, hydrogen is the least electronegative. However, hydrogen can only have one bond, so it's always going to be a terminal atom. So we'll put nitrogen with our hydrogens on our four sides. And we've got to determine the number of electrons uh, that each needs. So for nitrogen, I've got one times five electrons. For hydrogen, I've got four times one electron. So that's, oh, and because it is a positively charged ion, I've got a, so once I add these together, so I add these together, I've got nine electrons, but I've got to subtract one because it's a positive charge. So I have eight total electrons, eight total electrons to place. And we subtract that one electron because we have a positively charged ion, all right? So let's see what we do here now. I'll keep this blue. So the next thing is to place those electrons in bonds between these atoms. So let's go ahead and place them. Two, and then place these electrons by putting in those dashes to show a pair of electrons between these atoms. I've got two, four, six, eight. Notice that all of my electrons are placed. This guy is happy, but because it is an ion, we put brackets around it and put the charge on the outside to help us know that it is an ion, all right? So what's the polarity of this ion? Well, it's an ion. It's positively charged. That simply means that there are more protons in this comp than electrons. However, if we take a look at the nitrogen, Nitrogen is always going to have a higher electronegativity. But because this is an ion, we wouldn't consider it as polar or nonpolar. It's going to bond definitely as a positively charged entity, right? So when we're talking about polyatomic ions, we don't consider polarity when we're looking at polyatomic ions. So no polarity. Each of these bonds are slightly polar, but because this is a, it's a symmetrical entity in space, all of those chart, all of those poles cancel out. And as a whole, it's not necessarily polar, um, but it, it does have a positive charge. All right, you go ahead and practice, and we'll come back and show you the answers. Okay, let's take a look at carbon tetrachloride. We're going to have carbon as our central atom. 
We've got chlorines as terminal atoms. Let's count our electrons. For carbon, I've got one times four electrons. Chlorine, I've got four times seven electrons. That gives me 32 electrons that I need to place. Let's go ahead and place our bonds in between the atoms. And that takes up two, four, six, eight electrons. And that means I have to place 26 additional electrons. 24 additional electrons. As you notice, I can't add. All right, now let's go ahead and place them. Remember, we place all the remaining electrons on the outside atoms and share inside if we need to. All right, so let's just start putting them in. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. All of our electrons are placed, and this is correct. Now we want to take a look at the polarity of this molecule. Well, notice that carbon has four chlorines, and all four chlorines have eight electrons around them. Well, it's a symmetrical compound, and all the whole entire compound has an equal distribution of electrons. So this is nonpolar because we have an equal distribution of electrons. So if we take a look, even though each one of these bonds is polar, if we were to look at the electronegativity difference, each of these bonds is polar, but because it's like tug of war, they all cancel each other out, so it's a nonpolar compound. Let's take a look at H2S. Uh, hydrogen can never be a central atom, so we'll put sulfur in the middle, and let's count our electrons. Let's count our electrons. Oh, H2S. So we're going to put the hydrogens on the outside and the sulfur in the middle because we need two of them. And now let's count our electrons. So sulfur, one times six electrons. Six electrons. Um, and then we have hydrogen is two times one electron. So we have eight electrons to place. All right, let's go ahead and put our bonds in between the atoms. And that takes up two, four electrons. And we've got four electrons remaining. Hey, wait, 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 where do they go? Hydrogen already has their two. So that means that we put them on the central atom. And now we've got eight electrons, and the whole compound is complete. Now, the polarity, does this remind you of something that we looked at before? It should. It should remind you of oxygen. Um, if we look at this compound, notice that the sulfur has the most electron density, where the hydrons have, hydrogens have very little electron density. So... And if we were to look at electronegativity differences between each atom, we would see that each of these bonds are slightly polar. And this compound would be polar in this direction. So H2S is polar. And it's because the sulfur has a large electron distribution surrounding it. Let me give myself some space over here so I won't do pH 3 next to carbon dioxide. All right, let's do pH 3. Phosphorus, again, is going to be our central atom. It can make the most number of bonds. Hydrogen is always peripheral. Let's take a look at how many electrons each uh, gives. Phosphorus is 1 times 5 electrons. Hydrogen is 3 times 1 electron. Ooh, we've got eight electrons again to place. Let's go ahead and put in our bonds in between. Two, four, six electrons have been used. 
And that means I have two electrons left to place. We can't put them on hydrogen because it can't take any more. So we'll put the last two on phosphorus. Now, let's take a look at whether this compound is actually polar. Remember we took a look at the phosphorus and hydrogen bonds? They were nonpolar, right? So these bonds are nonpolar. However, however, phosphorus has a lone pair of electrons. If you see a central atom with a lone pair of electrons, know that that compound is going to be polar because we've got this distribution of electrons on that central atom. So that is going to give us a polarity in this direction. So this is a polar molecule, all due to the lone pair, lone pair of electrons. All right, let's do carbon dioxide. All right, carbon dioxide. Carbon and oxygen are our two compounds, so this is CO2. We know that it's CO2 because it's written with the covalent naming system. We've got carbon, and we see this prefix, so we know it has to be written as a covalent compound, CO2. So let's put our carbon as the central. We know that it is so because carbon can have four bonds. It is the least electronegative. We'll put it in the center, put the two oxygens on the outside. Let's count our electrons. Carbon has um, one times four electrons. Oxygen is two times six electrons. That's 12. That is 16 electrons that we have to place. Let's go ahead and write those bonds in between two, four. Now we've got, we've used four electrons, so we've got to place 12 electrons. Let's go ahead and put them on the outside and let's see what we, what we end up with. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Make that brighter. Hold on, let me make these over here a little bit brighter so you can see them. All right, we've placed all 12 electrons. Oxygen has, both oxygen atom has eight electrons, but notice that carbon only has four electrons. So carbon is not happy. There's not an octet on carbon. How do we end up making carbon happy? We can't add any more electrons, but what we can do is shuffle these electrons around. So let's take a pair of electrons from both of these oxygens and hand it over to the carbon. So now we end up with uh, carbon, two double bonded oxygens, and now we've got two lone pair of oxygens here. Separate these guys. All right. Now, let's check to make sure we've counted all of our electrons. That's two, four, well, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, right? So we've got all of our electrons. Let's see if this compound is polar or not. Well, if we look, both of the oxygens have, both of the oxygens have a more distribution of electrons than the carbon. Notice the carbon doesn't have any lone pairs, but these oxygens have lone pairs. So what does that mean though? And if we look at the electronegativity differences, we would also know that the oxygen is slightly more electronegative than the, well, much more electronegative than the carbon. So both of these oxygen have a large cloud around them, but because this is a symmetrical compound, those dipoles cancel each other out, and this is a nonpolar compound, carbon dioxide.